let's take a look at the price action we've been uh, we're getting in the S and P <clears throat> this morning and uh, going into yesterday. Um, I talk about it all the time about how you really want to watch these um, the power hour trades going into the trading session uh, in the morning, and then the power hour at night. Uh, we we had a really nice uh, big move on the S and P. Power hour extends all the way to around 4.10 to 4.15. So just because it's 4 o'clock PM, uh, this is a futures market. You're not trading stocks, individual stocks. You're trading futures. It tends to carry over uh, around 4.15, even up to 4.30 sometimes if you have a zone breakout. Uh, we had that uh, last night into the close. Um, and then we had another zone breakout. And we just had one this morning. We had a... Uh, uh, 7.15 this morning, we had a uh, outer edge setup that pushed us up through. But if you notice these outer edges, the key is this, is that um, the outer edges are going to fire an outer edge slingshot when you get at least one close outside of this zone. Remember, our zones have been tested for over the last 30 years, and these are the top zones on the S&P specifically that we have found to reverse the market. So an outer edge, you're going to see this um, yellow trigger bar, entry bar, fire. Um, now, you will, if you have your speakers on, you will have an audible alert when this happens. We have an indicator that does this in a strategy, if you want to strategy base it. So this, um, you'll see a yellow uh, reversal bar that comes in when that bar closes, and um, it'll give you an alert. You also have a zone breakout. A zone breakout is when you, you're you setting either a higher highs or lower lows, and we're getting into new territory. And we like to, we like to look at these zone breakouts when we're breaking into an imbalanced market, an imbalanced market on market profile. We like to see those break through. And then we also have the outer edge trade. Um, that you get to the outer edge you like to push. So this morning's action, I'll go since midnight. Let's just take a look at a smaller Renko so we can see what type of action we have this morning um, in the market. So we have three type of setups in the trade room. And let's keep it simple. We have, whoops, there's only three setups you want to look at on a daily basis with the methodology in the room. The first setup would be the zone breakout. The second setup would be an outer edge setup. Just happened this morning, just after seven. Outer edge slingshot. And then the third setup that we have is the failure trade. All right, so those are the three setups. So what you want to do on any given market, on any given day, you want to stock these setups. So you have a zone breakout. So this is your zone breakout. There's your zone breakout this morning. Here is your failure setup this morning. And here's your outer edge slingshot this morning. So since midnight on the S&P, this is current price action we're dealing with right now, it's still the, I have a trail still running on the outer edge setup. So what we want to do, let's, let's go over each setup, uh, specifically each setup. So when you're dealing with the zone breakout, you really what you're doing is you're buying strength or you're selling weakness. So with this oscillator below, the zone breakout and the failure setups, that's how these setups are set up with this oscillator below. The outer edge, this oscillator doesn't mean anything below. But a zone breakout, you want to see new highs or new lows when this oscillator is stronger or weaker. So you want to see new highs when the oscillator is above 100. And you want to see these zones break out, you'll have a yellow 
entry bar that automatically comes up. That's called a zone breakout. All right, that's when you're setting new highs, you're in a strong market. Look how the oscillator is above 100, the red line, or below negative 100, the green line. That means we're in a strong market. So zone breakouts, you want a strong market. You want a stronger market when you're buying the breakout. You want a weaker market when you're shorting the breakout. All right, keep it simple. So this oscillator is nice to give confirmation that a zone breakout is possibly going to have a nice run because you're in a stronger market. You don't want to have a zone breakout that happens if this oscillator is below 100 because that means you're in a weaker market. All right, a failure setup is where the market is going against the overall zone. So the zone is down here. Here's our top zone. It's when it goes against the zone. Now, the only way it will go against the zone is you'll see this oscillator. If you're shorting, it will get above negative 100. It will stay below positive 65. And then it'll crash right back down through a negative 100 again. If that happens, this yellow bar on your indicator is automatically going to come up. I have it programmed into the code to stay below 65 level. If the oscillator gets below, gets above 100, negative 100, stays below 65, crashes below back negative 100, this bar is going to form. That was a failure trade. So these two are, you get an oscillator confirmation. You get a stronger market on a zone breakout. You get a failure trade where it has to crash back below negative 100 after getting above it, staying below a threshold of 65 on a short. The long will be opposite. It's got to stay above the negative 65 for the upside. The third setup is the outer edge slingshot. What that is, is that we're getting the market that gets stretched. So imagine if you, the market's obviously in an uptrend here in the zone breakout and then starts retracing. Imagine taking a great analogy to use is take your left hand on a rubber band and hold it and stretch it all the way out to the outer zone. Now, once it, you reach the outer zone, let go of that rubber band. What happens to a rubber band? It snaps back to its origin. That's what an outer edge slingshot does. You can pretty much see where the target's going to be on the outer edge trades. Wherever that retracement comes from, that's typically your, your, going to be your targets on the outer edge trade. It comes pretty close to retracing that whole cup and handle formation. That's why I call it a slingshot. You get a big stretch. Once it gets outside by at least one close on my outer zone, it's been tested for 30 years of data. It likes to reverse the S&P. You let go of it. She likes to snap back. So when you look at it in those terms, you can stalk trades as lead, these are leading indicators way before they even come up. Because we know the next setup on a, on a zone breakout is here. We know the next setup will be a breakout of this level. That's the next zone breakout. We know the next zone outer edge trade is right there. So we know our outer edge trade is going to be here. We know our zone breakouts here coming up. And we know if we're going to get a failure trade, it's going to have to do this. It's going to have to crash below negative 100. These are very leading. You can tell way before these even come up. It's got to come up, stay below 65. It's got to crash below negative 100 again. As soon as that does, you have a yellow bar that automatically forms on your computer. An audible alert will happen, and there you go. 
So if you keep it into that layman's terms by stalking these setups, not only A, you can find out what type of market you're in. Are you in a breaking new high market? Are you in a retracement market with failure trade? Are you trying to get a snapback continuation? So at all times during the market, you're just stalking these three setups. With these three setups, only two setups are with trend of the zone. This is with trend. This is with trend. They will never be against zone trend. Your outer edge and your zone breaks will always be with zone trend. They will never counter trend trade the market. The failure trade is a corrective wave or a counter move. So these are motive waves, which are with the trend. I call them motive waves or trend trades. And this is a counter or a corrective wave. That's your only corrective wave or counter trade you'll have is a failure trade. But it's 100% oscillator based. It cannot come up unless this oscillator stays below my thresholds which the indicator will automatically do for you. So those are the three setups. Now, let's go to a couple things that I want to educate you guys on. One, when you get, when you're stalking these setups, what Rinko size do you use? All right. You can use a larger Rinko size like this. This is so, let, let's take a look at Rinko size, the difference in Rinko size. This is the 12020. So 120 Rinko size, Uni Rinko size. So this is a larger Rinko size. If you're using a 12020 Rinko, that means there's 20 ticks in between here, between the low and the swing high on this Rinko bar. So if you do that, we know that our stop is at least going to have to be 20 ticks. If I cut that in half, and this is an example this morning on these three, so this is the 11010 Rinko size. 11010. It's half the Rinko size. So I know my stop from this low to this swing high is 10, 10 ticks. So it's going to let me know where my stop can be. So the idea is if you want to look for smaller Rinko sizes, it's going to give you smaller stops. But let's look at the price action on smaller Rinko versus larger Rinko. As you can tell, the smaller Rinko, you get more retracements. Where the larger Rinko, on the, on the way down, it's just one large retracement this morning. One large push up. When I look at the smaller Rinko, we've had two retracements on the way down. There for a failure. Here also. So what we can do then, traders can use a macro to micro point of view. And I educate traders to do this if they want to trade off smaller Rinkos with larger Rinko push. What that means is I can have, I can trade off of smaller Rinko by going with the larger Rinko setup. What I mean by that, if I skinny this down and I look at price action this morning on the 12020 since midnight, if I put this over on the 11010 since midnight, that's half the Rinko. And let's scan down and let's take a look at price action. So if I take a look at price action, let me get these out of the way. And we'll look at our three setups. I can see on the 12020 since midnight, I've only had what? One setup. I've had the outer edge setup. That's all I've had. Outer edge slingshot. If I look on the 11010 with the exact same time from midnight until right now live price action of 843, then we've had a zone break, a failure trade, and an outer edge trade. 
So I've had all three of my setups hit on the lower Renko size, and I've only had one setup happen on the 120 of my larger Renko size. So that's the beauty of the versatility of this software. What you're able to do for traders, it gives you a lot of versatility of you can look at smaller Renkos to fire setups with overall larger Renko size. So you can put them beside each other if you would like. If you were to do this, if I'm looking for zone breakouts on a smaller Renko, you will want your large Renko to be in a hard trend you want it to be above 100. So if I can see when this fired at 135 in the morning, if I look at 135 over here, that's when price action was in a hard trend. They match up really, really well. So I got a zone breakout off of a, a smaller Renko size when I'm hard trending on this zone. Consequently, if I look when this is retracing on the 120, and I'm getting a retracement into the zone for an outer edge trade, that's this retracement on the 110. That's this retracement level. So what we're seeing is we're seeing that we get multiple retracements on a smaller Renko size with the overall big corrective wave push on the larger Renko size. So as we're moving down on this larger Renko, this failure fires at 4.43 in the morning, this morning. So if I go back to 4.43 in the morning, which is right here, let's take a look at the price action off the larger Renko size. This is where the failure happened. So the failure happened when the market was what again on the larger Renko size? It was in a weaker position. So what I'm doing now if I'm trading off of a small Renko size, I'm confirming it's in a stronger position, push up on a zone breakout, weaker position on a failure breakdown. Remember the outer edge setups here, it's irrelevant what Renko size you use uh, on the outer edge because of the same zones. So the oscillator doesn't mean, it doesn't mean if you're in a strong weaker position on the outer edge zones, but it's very important these stronger, weaker markets, if you blow negative 100 above 100, if you get a zone breakout or a failure trade. So what, I, what I'm showing you is, is you can use a larger Renko for the overall direction of the push on getting in the smaller Renko entries. Now there's two ways you can do it. You can use this as a total indicator-based system, which a lot of you guys, traders do. You don't like trading strategies, per se. So you can do that. Or you can use it where these fire and they fire off on your an audible alert when these three setups come up on your computer. And then you can use Chart Trader, and you can do that as far as managing your trade with an ATM strategy. If you do a strategy when your strategy in and out, there's a couple ways you can do the strategy. You can wait and see if the setup is qualifying nice with a larger Renko push and use a smaller Renko entry if you see you're coming down to an outer edge or if you're pushing hard and you're in a stronger position, you can have your smaller Renko size activated or if you're pushing lower and you're seeing your oscillators getting back above, staying below 65 to activate it for the failure, you can do that before it comes up. You can toggle on and toggle off these strategies with a simple click of the mouse. You can toggle it on and let the strategy manage your trade for you. So I call this trade management software. It can manage your trade for you. So when it got into this outer zone trade and you're in it, you can let it manage it yourself with a trailing stop or this failure trade with the trailing stop, or this zone breakout, a trailing stop. So you can use the strategy to toggle in and toggle off to manage your trade when you see one of these setups coming up. 
So I like to educate traders that, hey, use a larger Renko size than 120 on the S&P, but you should have a smaller Renko size here available to your disposal because all three setups came up since midnight last night, zone breakout, failure trade, and outer edge. They've all followed through this morning. And if you're trading off just the 120, we've had just one outer edge trade. The second way to do the, the, the strategy is find time windows. So I get traders that ask, well, what's the best time, what's the best Renko size, and what's the best strategy, I mean, what's the best um, Renko to use for this market, or this market, or this market, or that market? Well, there's going to be different time windows. What I've found to work the best on any of these setups, zone breakout, failure trade, and outer edge, um, I like power hour the best, universal on all markets. That's the morning push and the evening push into the close. But there's time windows that work on different markets. So you can use Strategy Analyzer to analyze this to find out what you want to do with this different specific markets. When we tested this software on this, these zones, they were tested on the S&P only on the last 30 years on these zones. So that's why we have the S&P specifically in the market because the S&P works quite well with our 30-year test of these zones. Zone, these zones like to react very well off the S&P. It's the best zones we have found over the past 30 years of data. You can see it comes down to it. It loves to respond off these zones, these outer edge. These zones are very, very relevant. Here's into the close last night and power hour. Here this morning, caught it again. So we got the zones down. Now we got the, uh, when we're breaking out to new highs down, and then we got the failure down. So that's how we have to stock it. There's a couple things you can do. Now, if you go into the strategy, and this is for members of the room, the software, I'll get into a little more detail on the software. We're going to start getting in a little more detail on the software for you traders. If you scroll down into the software, and I go into it, where is it here? Let me see. If you go set up and you calculate on each tick, so you have an option on, on under setup if you're trading the software. And I want you to run this, traders, that are members that lease the software. I want you to run this in two ways and let the software run. I want to show you the big difference on a fill or on a trailing stop. If I go and I change this on the setup to calculate on each tick versus calculate on each close, we have it defaulted on each close for you. It's defaulted. You can change your calculation to each tick. What it's going to do when you uh, uh, when you do these large Renko sizes, or even the smaller ones, if you simply do back testing, okay, if you do back testing on this, it's going to show you when the bar closes. If you do live testing on it, you're going to see where each ticket closes, meaning let's say you want a tight ATR trail. And this is a 110.10, but let's say you want this right at a 199, a one, a nine, a nine trail just inside of the Renko bar. Because a nine, let's say if what works well on these zone, what I found that works well on these zone breaks, let's get to a zone break first of all, that's a failure trade. What I found works on the zone breaks if you're just inside of the Renko bar. So I have a nine right here trail on the Renko bar. What it'll do is instead of waiting for the bar to close on a closing basis, it's going to do tick by tick. So your fill is going to be right when it ticks outside of that trail, it's going to get you out on your trail. So for those that, that like to run the strategy, try trading on tick by tick versus on close on inside your strategy. And that's what I'm saying. This, this strategies are very flexible or they're very, um, you know, user friendly because you can 
change the strategy to pretty much do what you want it to do. So just changing that one variable will get you, save you some ticks on your exit on your trail, going by tick by tick versus by close. All right, so those are a few things that we'll, we'll go over for you members um, as far as that goes. But I, I just want you to understand that the zone breakout and the failure trades are use this oscillator below where the outer edge just uses the outer edge. We want to get to the outer edge. We want to see a reversal. We want to see a continuation. And then consequently is if you want to use a larger Rinko size, do yourself a favor if you're trading just the S&P. And you may have a better Rinko than just cutting it in half with a 110. You may like a 113 better. Or you may like a some some like a one. Some 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 of you guys are sending me a 119 or 117 or 112. You know 112 12. Whatever you decide. I, I'm keeping it simple for you for a starting area for you guys. Is that I would I would put a 120 20. And I put beside it using all three indicators besides a 11010. And I just want you to watch price action. And you'll see it right away. It's not like you have to watch this for weeks and weeks and weeks. You're going to see it right away because these setups come up on a daily basis. I want you to watch how the 12020 is in a stronger position when these zone breakouts happen on the smaller Renko size. I want you to watch how when this 12020 is in a retracement counter corrective wave move in a weaker position, that's when the failure is going to fire on the, the lower Renko size. The outer edge will just fire when it gets to the outer edge. And then just put it beside each other and let it trade. And watch price action. Watch how they, they work together. That's called macro to micro. How to use a larger Renko to set the trade up with a smaller entry Renko setup, all right? So with all three of these setups that came up today, zone breakout, outer edge and failure, these are set up based upon the trail. Now, you'll notice that I have my trail looser on the failure setups and a looser on the outer edge setups because the outer edge can, can waffle a little bit and then take off but I have my trail set real tight inside of my Rinko size. These zone breakouts, either they're going to go or they're not going to go, period. You don't need to have a real loose tra trail on a zone breakout like this because zone breakouts should not waffle. They should take off. If you're setting a new high, it should retrace typically half the Rinko size bar, and then it should go. But it shouldn't retrace 90% 90, 90 of the Rinko bar, then go. So these zone breakouts, what you're going to find is you can tighten your trail up. I do like to have a looser trail outside of my Rinko size on my outer edge because it tends to do what? On, when you're looking at outer edge, it will try to W bottom or M top, so it will waffle around a little bit. So when you guys are strategy testing, be aware of that. Be aware of your failure trades. They're more like zone breakouts. You can tighten those stops up if you want. If you're going to do that, you're going to have to enter the strategy twice because I have them both on the same ATR trail here. If I were to use a tight trail, it would be on the failure setup and a zone breakout just inside my Renko bar. If I'm going to have a, a looser trail, it would be my outer edge trade because it tends to waffle with an M top or W bottom. This is no, this is a W bottom down here. You see the W. It's a lazy W before it took off. So you need to let it have a little bit of space if you're going to do the strategy as far as that goes. All right, so those are the three setups. That's how we want to use it. You can't put these beside each other. That's what I would do. And just let it trade. And if you, if you can't get ticks off of one, one, uh, one futures contract, I mean what one um, like the S&P, you can't follow three, four, or five different markets at the same time. I would get used to the S&P first. Get really good at these setups. Understand how the S&P works, and then you expand to why the failure setup, why it fires where it fires, 
and why the outer edge fires where it fires. These are all leading setups. You should know exactly when these are going to fire way before they even fire because they're, the first two is oscillator based with the zone and the second one is just an outer zone. They're very, very easy to understand, very simple setups. But as you can tell, they can dictate price action when you allow them to work for you. Okay? And then if you are a if you are a strategy trader, change on close to tick by tick with a tighter trail inside your Rinko and then have another chart set up on bar close and I want to show you the difference in fills. You'll be surprised on your performance. It helps out your performance on your strategy. Okay, that's just a tip I want to give you guys as far as that goes.